Dave O'Brien, Dan Dockage alongside. Great to have you with us. This joint is jumping right away. Dave, knew today the place outside was lined. Kids were lined up, and then the buses came in with Marquette students. This joint is absolutely jumping. An excellent officiating crew led by the veteran John Cal. Wisconsin in the red. Controlled by Vander Blue, and we are underway. And this crowd, as Dan mentioned, was on their feet all through the pregame ceremonies as Blue takes it very quickly down to the baseline. Anderson up top. He can shoot it. Here's the point guard, Kadugan. Blue is off to a hot start this season and gets them rolling right away. Too easy, Dave. Too easy. Blue just came into the middle. If you let Vander Blue get to the paint, he's going to jump over everybody that Wisconsin has, and he's going to score, get fouled, or both. They say everybody Wisconsin has. They don't have many. They have a couple of big, big players who are missing from their lineup. Their point guard, who they lost in October, and Mike Bruzewitz was out with a concussion. Loose on the baseline, a scramble for that. And it was over the line and out of play. It's going to stay on this end with 10 on the shot clock. And there's Bruzewitz, who suffered on Thursday a concussion in practice. Well, with the big hair, he must have got hit pretty hard. <laughs> well. Because he's got a lot of padding. But he's hot about sitting out. He feels like he's okay, but he didn't pass the concussion test. So he doesn't get to play. And you mentioned the point guard, Josh Gosser, who is really the toughest guy on Wisconsin. They've had to play this entire season with him. Out the uh, they have really missed him. The shot clock is going to expire here. So the first big defensive stop is Marquette's. Now here's Gosser pregame with Buzz Williams, the Marquette head coach, and obviously on crutches and out for the season. Dave, you see the effects already of not having a point guard. We watched Jordan Taylor for the last four years, but no point guard, no recognition of a shot. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. They don't recognize a shot clock violation, Wisconsin. Not the first time that's happened. Luke kicks it out for Kadugan, the senior from Toronto. He's an outstanding point guard. Very rarely turns it over. Blue again, partially blocked. And it comes away to the Badgers. Well, you see right now, Wisconsin is really coming to the ball. It, it would serve Marquette well to skip pass on the drive instead of taking that shot because they're driving into traffic. They need a big one from that man, Jared Bergren. Barely got the pass. The shot on the way and off the back of the iron by Decker. Sam Decker's first college start. Could do it into the lane. Backs in two. Marquette on top, 4-0 right out of the gate. Dave, that was a great play by Kadugan because Brust had gotten back and was in great position trying to take the charge, but Kadugan just avoided him, showed terrific body control. Pass tipped out of play off the fingertips of Ben Brust, the Wisconsin junior, back to the breakout. Well, you're going to see on the miss by Deckard, transition, Brust is back, he puts his head in the bucket, but Kadugan flying, jumps to his right, avoids contact. That is not nearly as easy as what Kadugan made it look. Kadugan, probably Buzz Williams' favorite player. He says he plays to win every single possession. You know, he did today in the shoot-around, which is pretty physical and tough in a Buzz Williams world. He competed every single possession during the shoot around and you know what his teammates followed him they didn't want to let him down block it at the foul line shot clock is down to five anderson bouncing for kadugan now back over the shoulder blue has to fire it up right at the shot clock and he hits the three he had the buzzer in his ears and he drained it he did and trayvon jackson just put his hand up he needed to come out with the one second left and make Vander Blue drive, didn't do it, three-point shot. Evans, fifth year senior in heavy traffic, draws the foul, he'll go to the line. 16.59 to go. This one just beating the shot clock by Vander Blue. Dave, like a quarterback that has a, a, a clock in his head, right here, Trayvon Jackson has to get out there. He's close, but you see one second on the clock. You've got to make Vander Blue put the ball down and rush a shot after one dribble with no time. Evans at the line having a death of a time lately with that he's only 37 percent at the foul line he's a fifth year guy he's a fifth year guy that started the season a mess one for eight first game out hasn't improved since and this is the pair batted right back into the hands of decker very talented freshman and wisconsin will set it up the badgers coming in six and three 
They've lost a couple of games to ranked opponents. Florida, who soundly beat at both of these schools, and a rare home loss to Virginia. Rush had that one go right through him. And out of play. So Bo Ryan, 12th year at the helm for Wisconsin. Won 26 games last year, ninth time in 11 years that Wisconsin has won at least 20. And leading along with that, Mata, winning percentage guy and the coach in the history of Big Ten basketball. Nobody in the country coaches basketball better than Bo Ryan. His team, however, has already turned it over three times as Kadugan pops from 17 and it rolls out. You know what's unusual about the turnovers, Dave? Three of them have been pass and catch type things, and when you watch Wisconsin in warm-ups, nobody works on simple pass and catch more than Wisconsin. In fact, nobody comes close to working on it as much as Wisconsin. You rarely see it. Rush to round it out. He's having a great rebounding season, but today, as short as they are for players, he's going to have to big, have a big scoring day as well, you would think. Kick back out. Anderson straight on. Got a great look, but it won't fall. And Decker's there to grab the rebound. Wisconsin still hasn't scored, Dan. Yeah, and I think the ball just straight has to go to the post right here to Bergman. Just throw it to him, figure it out later, whether it's a cut or a shot for Bergman. He's got O'Toole on his back. Kevin straight on himself. No, they're getting decent shots. They're not hitting them. A scramble with a rebound. Decker comes away with it. And a foul on the play. Great move by the youngster. The freshman drains it. He'll be at the line in a moment. And before this game, as we go to a timeout now, there was a very nice ceremony here inside the building to honor Rick Majerus, who, of course, was a head coach and an assistant coach here at Marquette and our colleague at ESPN for two years. I was very fortunate to call Rick my partner for those two seasons. He is going to be terribly missed. He was a great basketball coach, a fiercely loyal, deeply caring friend. And everyone thought just a brilliant man on the court, but a special guy to call your colleague and friend. God bless. Rest in peace, Coach Rick Majerus. Well, it took a while, but Wisconsin's finally on the scoreboard 7-2. And you'll see Buzz Williams, the head coach inside that huddle, wearing a turtleneck today. That's a classy tribute to Rick Majerus was very fond of that look. Yeah, it sure is. And, and that's what Buzz Williams is about in talking to everybody in and around the Marquette basketball program. He's a relationship guy that has a real history, along with Tom Crean when he was here prior. For the Al McGuire's, the Rick Majerus, the Hank Raymond's, that coach in this program. And as you see right there, Coach Williams, a tribute to Coach Majerus wearing a black vest. Back to back, black sweet 16s. Now in his fifth year, Decker for three-point play gets it. You're going to hear from this kid, the 6'7 freshman from Sheboygan, Wisconsin. He has a lot of talent. He's got a lot of bounce. He's got swagger. A little, a little like Nick Stauskas at Michigan. They just believe. They're coming to a program to be All-Americans. They're not coming to just contribute. And, and I saw him all summer at AAU. He's just terrific. Locked in with a misfire. Rebound comes to Brust, who's averaging eight rebounds a game. He's 6'1". And you see why there. He fought his own teammate for that rebound. <laughs> it was only those two underneath, but he didn't care. He fought his own guy. I just think they have to play through the post, Dave. Outside for Bergman, certainly deadly beyond the three-point line, even though he's 6'10". Rust with an airborne dish. Decker nicely done for two. Two ways to play out of the post. Set a guy up in the post, left block, right block, throw it to him, or drive the basketball, draw the defense, find the next, and that's exactly what Rust did there. Decker has all the points. He's handed to blow and blow and his shooting. That's a good drive. From last year. He has a fundamental flaw in his shot. We talked about it today. He comes down a little bit when he shoots the basketball, but sometimes repetition overcomes that. And he has worked so hard, Vander Blue, that he's overcome a major, major flaw in his jump shot. When you make them, they all look nice. They all look great. Bergren, who has a very good looking shot, but not this time. And Blue comes out of the pack with it. Marquette will push the tempo when they can. Here's one. Yes. Three-pointer for Trent Lockett, the senior. And Marquette opens up a 12-5 lead. Well, talking to Jerry Wainwright, he felt like Lockett was the one guy from Marquette that hasn't really got it going yet. Kevin thought he got fouled on that one. He thought he got hit up on the wrist. We're talking about a guy that hasn't really got it going yet. Good to see for Wisconsin. Evans get a buck. And it is that's going to be a traveling violation on Devontae Gardner. So he gives it up. 
With 13.40 to go, back to Vander Blue's bucket. Well, you're talking about a guy that originally committed to Wisconsin here. He's taken out. You see, that's a push-off, and that's the biggest difference between NBA officials' day and college officials. I promise you in the NBA, that's called an offensive foul, and it was. I mean, you cannot shove the defender, Showalter, uh, off. Now, Showalter is in the guard blue. Even if he gets pushed off, he should not fall down. You're guarding the best player on the other team. You stand your ground. You fight like crazy. Make him score over you. He is their best player. He had 20 against Florida, 21 against Butler. He comes away with a theft here. On the attack, can't finish, but there is a foul on the play. With 13.28 to go, as Blue went down on the deck. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Bo Ryan is hostile. He is hostile because right in front of him, Jim Burr was the lead official, had the best angle, didn't call the foul. You're going to see it right here. Lazy pass by Showalter. Blue comes out. Now see if you can see the official. You really can't out in front of Bo Ryan. And Bo Borowski comes in from behind. And Bo Ryan had the right reaction for a coach was to say, look, this guy had a better angle. How can you possibly call that? from the same angle that we had right here. Borowski, one of the best young officials in the game. No question. He's Very a good crew good here official. today. We take another look. Well, you're going to see now, Burt turns around. He's got the best look, according to Bo Ryan. And Bo comes in behind, but I will tell you this. If Bo Borowski makes a call, it's 99.99999% the right call. Well, Ryan would beg to differ. He, he well, that's a point zero 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 one percent. Thirteen twenty two to go here in the first half. Dan Dockage, Dave O'Brien with it, and a foul. This will go against Marquette and Jamil Wilson, trying to defend right around midcourt. Marquette off to a nice start here. It's an action-packed day of college hoops tonight here on the ESPN2. Three-ranked teams, number eight, Arizona, is on the road to face Clemson at eight, then at ten. It's the fighting Illini, really off to a great start against Gonzaga. What a game that one is in the kennel. Hey, I didn't realize this. The Illini have won four of the last five. Uh, John Gross is doing a great, great job. He's energized. You know, you have four guys in double figures, including Tyler Griffin, who's playing as a fifth-year guy. And he's got some shooters. He's got Brandon Paul, DJ Richardson playing very well. Shot clock at eight. Russ trying to dish underneath. Kaminsky, tough catch, and he gets it up and in. He's 6'11". He is 6'11", with a good touch with the left hand. But again, and watch this, both teams are schooled not to let the ball get into the paint. And when it goes into the paint, it's a problem for the defense. Kaminsky fouling Otule, who's also 6'11", and 275. Trying to contain him, 13-9, Marquette. Now, all time, Wisconsin has the edge in this series. This tremendous rivalry, 64 to 54. The Marquette prevailed last season in Madison, dominating in the paint now in 61 54. A rare victory at the Kohl Center. Yeah, four of the last six games have been decided, or excuse me, have been won by the visiting team, and these are all great environments. Like, this is a terrific environment. There, there's not many of these type of games played on home courts anymore in college basketball, but this environment is awesome. Guards are very strong. Got up. Kaminsky knocked it away. A loose ball. And now a whistle as it starts to get fast and furious. Kaminsky and Gardner really going toe to toe. That foul will be on George Marshall, freshman for Wisconsin. They've only done, I don't know, maybe six games so far this year, but Gardner is the most aggressive guy I've seen all year posting. I mean, he's dying for the basketball. Beautiful catch and touch by Wilson on the inbounds play. Yeah, terrific out of bounds set. George Marshall switched to Wilson. No match athletically, just threw it up to him. He went and got it. And for Wisconsin, this game against Marquette means they have already faced four teams who went to the NCAA tournament last season. Kind of a rocky start for the Badgers. Out of character for them. Six and three coming in. Evans trying to take that baseline. Nearly threw it away. Pass tip to Jackson. Evans had it knocked out of his hands. It's out of play off Marquette with eight on the clock. Well, let me show you what happened on that inbounds play. Wilson, a terrific athlete. In fact, Jerry Wainwright told me best athlete he's had. He is right here. You're going to see a little screen, and then Marshall's going to pick him up. Marshall, way too small. Just throw the basketball up to the taller, more athletic Wilson. Usually gets you a bucket. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the all-new Ford C-Max Hybrid. Go further. In 
inside the sparkling BMO Harris Bradley Center. It is Marquette leading Wisconsin 15 to 9 in what has been a tremendous rivalry game. And adding to that, Vander Blue's performance, the native of Madison, Wisconsin, who already has eight. Well, committed to Wisconsin, changed his mind. And he's come out like a kid with his chip on his shoulder, quite frankly. Three out of four has made his own three. But, and he has a steal. I look at players' eyes, Dave, and he has the eyes of a guy that's out here proving something against a team he does not like. Remember, when he decommitted from Wisconsin and then went to the rival Marquette, he caught a lot of grief. I mean, a lot of grief across not only the state, but certain parts of the country. This is an opportunity for him to kind of know the right word that you can say on TV, but kind of, what's the right word, Dave? Kind of stick it to Wisconsin. I think that's well that said. Okay? That's All appropriate. Right. He has it now crossing midcourt. So Marquette with the basketball and a 15-9 advantage. Derek Wilson, who occasionally runs the point, gets it off to Jake Thomas. He can really shoot it. He shot it today and walked right there. It's got to go because he is working really hard. Well, Gardner got caught no foul. Stayed right with it and banked it in. Brought 60 pounds and is just right now on every offensive possession out toughing Bergeron for great post position. Watch that. Try not walk, Try not to watch the ball. Watch the matchup of those two guys, Bergeron. Marshall, the freshman, was started half a dozen games for Bowl, which is very rare. Uh, DeVore Ryan's leadership at Wisconsin. Shot clock down to 11. Rust on the spin. Got his man airborne and knocked it down. How many times have we seen that over the last four years of Jordan Taylor late clock? Bo Ryan teaches shot fake at the end of your dribble. Shot fake before you go, shot fake at the end of your dribble, and you saw it right there by Ben Bruss. Well, he leave Thomas open. It's usually not a good idea, though he missed badly there. He leaned right and ran backwards. He didn't stay with his shot and get his feet and his shoulders going towards the rim. Shooting's easy. It's like anything else. If you're going to throw a ball, you lean forward. Same with shooting. You go forward towards the rim, not sideways. Teardrop no good, and it's going to be out of play with 10.38 to go. Hey, some of the best teams in the country highlight ESPN's doubleheader next Saturday. Catch another Big Ten team in action. Number three, Michigan. I know you love them. Taking on West Virginia, then at 10, a key non-conference battle, the Gators and the Wildcats. Well, that is a terrific doubleheader. I do love Michigan. I am in the Final Four. Glenn Robinson Jr. is a terrific freshman, but Nick Stauskas, the freshman from Canada, is a great freshman. Like, he's as good. If you want to sound smart at a holiday party and you get talking college hoops, just tell someone, look, best freshman in the country, Nick Stauskas in Michigan. He's terrific, and the backcourt's not bad either. Burke and Hardaway Jr., look at those numbers. For John Beeline's team. And you know, Dave, Burke has had two halves, first halves, where he hasn't scored. And then the second half, he's gone double figures with six assists. Wisconsin turns over Marquette. And Brust is going to take his time. Remember, they don't have a point guard that they really rely on with Gosser out with a torn ACL. And that has cost him at times, particularly in the Virginia loss. Brust will fire it up, but you could tell coming off his hand it was going to go. Yeah, he, he went left and the ball went right. Kadoga off the window. That's a packed shot for him. <laughs> Again, Trayvon Jackson, like earlier in the game, has, was set up. But Kadugan with great leap and great side leap, actually, in body control, avoided contact, got a layup. Great caught. Really oh, around the back pass, but Brust is blocked. At least two. Golden Eagles got their hand on it. Kadugan will back it out now. We should work at the Anderson back up top for Blue. Trent Lockett now. Kadugan directing traffic. Shot clock at 15 now for Marquette. Kadugan trying to get to the foul line and in the lane. The one-hander no. Rebound tipped to the baseline. Great effort there by Juan Anderson to keep it alive. Lockett wants the lane, flips it up there, a wild shot, no whistle, but it's going to be tipped out of playoff Wisconsin. You see constantly Marquette is driving the basketball into the lane, and that is absolutely what Bo Ryan does not want, because when you let a more athletic guy that has pre is pretty skilled, which most of Marquette's players are, when you let him into the lane, they're going to score, get fouled, both, or both. 
And that's a real problem right now for Wisconsin Marquette getting into the lane. Ruzowitz, of course, unable to play because of the concussion. Has a reputation as a banker. With hair like that. <laughs> I'm just glad he's okay. I am too. Now, the doctors did not clear him today. It might be some time before they do. Wilson looking inside. And a whistle. 50 to go in the first half. Bergen and company try to contain Chris O'Toole. He's a guy who's had a lot of injuries throughout his career at Marquette. Last year, tore the ACL in his left knee eight games into the season. We talked about it before. He was born with one functioning eye, his right eye. The left is a glass eye. O'Toole averaging about seven points a game. Looking for his first points in this one. Watch the position that Atule is fighting for here. Watch. Look at the position. He's back and he's spread out. He's got Berger on his hip, on his shoulder, causing a foul. Between Otule and Gardner, they've come out with, it's like personal to go at Berger, and you can just see it. Like, I don't know if they're mad at Berger, know him personally, but you can just see that they are deciding, we're going to just bully you every time down the floor, and it's been very effective. Berger has been, for the most part, the go-to guy for the Badgers, 15.7 rebounds. Pretty quiet here so far in the first half. That one tapped out of play. They'll keep it, 8.37 to go. And I'll tell you what, man, Marquette plays hard. I mean, really hard. And playing hard isn't just running the floor. It's how active your hands are many times or how hard you're posting. And Marquette doing a great job in both of those areas. Marquette practices as hard as anybody I can remember. They do. They absolutely do. They practice taking charges. They practice jumping to the ball. Help side defense. Staying in the stands. Very impressive. Urban Barrett has really lost it. Brust wants to fire it up there and got it all ahead of three. Yeah, Brust set a screen, a back screen, then received the screen. And Thomas, not understanding the scouting report, you don't help off of Brust on a back screen. You stay with him. Thomas didn't give up three. Thomas thought about it. Lockett will drive it into the lane. Swings the pass for Tule. Comes right to Decker. So they turn it over. Terrific play by Trayvon Jackson. Getting in on help side, tipping the ball to Decker. Jackson, a guy they really need to take over that point position, at least for long stretches. Bergen wants the paint, gave it up, and you're right, they are all over him, Dan. Yeah, it's personal to both of Tule and Gardner. And he didn't get fouled there. Look at the post position right now. Look underneath the bucket. And good post position is determined by getting a heel or heels into the paint. Derek Wilson getting instructions from Buzz Williams. Buzz is down about 35 pounds from last season, incidentally. He looks good. Thomas. Wilson, the shot clock down to five. The crowd counting along with it. The leaner in. The paint for two. Great shot. You said it. Ball got into the paint. And that is a focal point offensively for Marquette. A focal point defensively to not allow it for Wisconsin. And right now, Marquette's winning that battle. Bergen popping out. See O'Toole coming with him. Under seven minutes to go in the opening half. And a sloppy turnover by Jackson. Wilson bounces up ahead. Lead in by Jamil Wilson. And a timeout for Ryan. Starting to get away a little bit, and the slimmer, trimmer Buzz Williams putting it on Wisconsin here in the rivalry early. Well, the Marquette student body very happy. Their biggest lead today so far, nine points. Well, you're going to see a function of two things. Wisconsin not having a real point guard, and just a lazy laid-out pass, and the hands of Marquette are so good in this game and so active. If you lay a ball out there, if you're sloppy at all, Marquette's going to take it and take it out in transition and go get a bucket. 23-14. Marquette feeling pretty good about themselves right now. Bergen looking for a guard and back to Trayvon Jackson. There's a trap. It's free in midcourt. They get it up ahead for Lock and he can't save it as it rolls out over the baseline. And another timeout. 6.31 left in the half. All sorts of pressure from Marquette. About six and a half to go. Brent Bielema, the former Wisconsin football coach, he's now on to Arkansas, and he's getting the business from the Marquette kids. As you would expect, I'll say this about Brent Bielema, when Urban Meyer came in the Big Ten, he got his feelings hurt because Urban went after him a little bit. 
He gets his feelings hurt by one guy going to the SEC. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is better, slightly more bruising. <laughs> he better get ready for it. 23 14 Marquette silencing the mark the uh, Wisconsin faithful here in Marquette's home arena at least for the moment. O'Ryan trying to cook up some way to get the ball up to midcourt. He's having trouble with that. He was really having trouble with it and on the other end penetration 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 from Marquette taking the ball wherever they want a real difference difference in quickness on the perimeter between the two teams Marquette big advantage. Jackson almost bottled up again. Jared Bergman, by the way, 15 points a game, has not scored for Wisconsin. Not a good sign for the Badgers. Decker swinging for Evans. Evans trying to back in a little closer. Jackson throws it away. He's made a couple of turnovers. Blue going for 10 points. Missed fires. He was well defended. He was really well defended. Bergman got to the basket, made a bad play here, though. Got it back. Gardner trying to swing the pass, maybe a little too much. I would have bet anything that Gardner was going to take it right through Bergman's chest right there. Yeah, that's what it looked like. Decker with a tough give. Evans will lay it in in big traffic. The only guy on Wisconsin that looks like he has a physical advantage over the man he's guarding is Decker. Everybody else is a step slow or not quite as strong. Are you as impressed with Decker's vision as I am early? I've always been impressed with Sam Decker as a basketball player, Dave. He can penetrate with the basketball in terms of dribbling. He can shoot the basketball. He's made a three in every game. And as you said, he finds the next guy. He kind of plays one Polaroid ahead, one yeah. snapshot ahead. That's a great way of putting it. Blue wriggles in for two and not to be denied as he went into the left hand. He did. He just came off a little curl and then penetrated, got into the lane again. Penetration into the paint from Marquette, killing Wisconsin, who normally allows none. 25-16. Sue gets hot now for the Badgers. Decker on the baseline. Difficult play as he went to his left hand and missed it close. So they give it right back to the Golden Eagles. He won 27 games last year, went 14 and 4 in the Big East. Lockett goes right into that lane virtually every opportunity. Yeah, I mean, I, it's an overused word for by me in the last two minutes, but penetration is what is absolutely killing Wisconsin off on defense. Right here, up to the rim. Once again, blocked by Jackson. Got it back, shot clock's down to two. Blue had the fire. And Yikes. The entire crowd was yelling, give it up. Give it up. Bonte Gardner, here's where he took it right in to Berger and right at his chest. Now back to Vander Blue. And again, the second time he's hit a three with the shot clock expiring. Dave. That's a great play by Wisconsin or Marquette. A great play by Wilson finding blue, but it's also a terrible play by the freshman Showalter. The play was ongoing. He 33 was going down the other end of the court. Blue and Wilson stayed with the play, and it cost Wisconsin three. Second time that's happened in the first half. Blue and Kadugan, terrific team here in the first half. Blue has 13 of those points. And Marquette has their biggest lead of the half. Well, Bo Ryan is usually terrific in these types of things. The ball has to go to the post, but a shooter has to be same side as the post, Dave. Decker, great dish. Rush has a block by Thomas. Clean play. Thomas wants the ball here in the far left corner, but Rocket will take it. And battle for the rebound is taken away by the freshman. And that kid, Showalter, is a big, big-time athlete. 
but you have to have a shooter either at the top of the key or same side as your postman. And right now, Frost, who's the best shooter, has been opposite the postman. Evans on the back down, sweeps into the right hand, it's spun out. Fighting for the rebound, a block shot, but a foul, Decker got hit, and he's fired up. 2.57 to go, Marquette up 30 to 16. Chris, thank you very much. The Big Ten and the AP Top 25, the most ranked teams of any conference. Six, Indiana, number one, of course. Well, I think Indiana's playing as well and together as any, and Michigan is right there. I think they're both Final Four teams. Illinois is the team in, in Minnesota. Minnesota leading the country in offensive rebounds. That's the impact of Trevor and Bakwe. Michigan State not quite getting going yet, but I love the job John Gross is doing with the Illinois program. He's energized some of those kids. We talked about Tyler Griffey, but Brandon Paul averaging over 17. DJ Richardson playing well. It's going to be a great year in the Big Ten. Great season as Decker is at the line. Typically, you'd see Wisconsin in that top 25, not this year. Well, they're really struggling. You know, you think about lost Jordan Taylor, then lost their point guard to be Josh Gosser. Today, they've lost Bruzewitz, but the real key for them, for Bo Ryan, is going to be George Marshall. He was so highly touted by the staff last year, Dave, and just hasn't played as well as he played in practice last year. Redshirted last year, going to be an offensive foul, 2.44 to go. ESPN College Basketball is available live anytime, anywhere on your computer, tablet, or smartphone at watchespn.com and with the watch espn app although not while you're driving no nope, never never ever glad to hear that with Tule with the foul his second and while you're at it stop texting people while you're driving too <laughs> yes exactly just stop and slow down or if you're not going to slow down get in the right lane what are you in such a hurry for, let right? me go past you no, absolutely no text. Stop texting, will you please? 2.40 to go in the half. As Evans attacks for the foul line. See the difference, Dave, on penetration. Wisconsin can't get to the basket. Right there, Evans was stopped, whereas Marquette's getting to the basket. And that opens up the backboard and a number of other things. Evans drops in the jump shot. The senior from Phoenix, Arizona with the hit, 30 to 18. Badgers need a lot more of that. Yeah, best look Evans has had all year on his face in the game. Gardner going in strong block by Bergen, one of the premier shot blockers in the country. Gardner needed one more dribble, use the other side of the basket. He's got to know Bergen has long arms, and right now Gardner's a little winded. He needed to use the rim, not athletic ability. You can see why Gardner would be winded after that end to end rop of his for two. A whistle before the shot. So no basket here with a minute 56 to go. Now look at Wisconsin in their turnovers already in this game nine and for the season typical for them they're among the very best at not turning it over. Well they're being exposed. I mean against a really tough hard nosed team that look Marquette is not playing a basketball game Marquette is competing to win and Buzz Williams has his team totally locked in and totally competing whereas I think the perimeter for Wisconsin is just trying to survive here in the first half. Evans is trying to take over. Down he goes. No whistle. Gardner got hit. No whistle. They let him play. And at 45 to go before halftime here in Milwaukee. The Battle of Wisconsin. Wilson feeding Gardner. Spins to his right. Takes the hit. Almost went for him too. And a very active Devontae Gardner will go to the line. It's been all game. He gets deep post position basically every single time down the floor. And as I said earlier with this kid Garner, it is personal right now. I mean, he is taking it right at Jared Bergeron every time down. Now, right now, Gardner's a little tired. And I wouldn't be surprised if Buzz Williams doesn't get him out. But he certainly is active and tough in this ballgame. Bergeron fouled him his second personal. Gardner, 78% foul shooter. Yeah, that wary physique is starting to get to him. You can see it. It was. He shot that free throw like... All right, I have to do it. I'm a little tired. I don't want to do it, but I got to. Through the bench for Marquette. It's a deeper Marquette team than we've seen in a while. Well, their leading scorer is this kid, Gardner. He comes in off the bench, so that certainly helps your numbers. 30-18. Showalter getting a lot of minutes early. For Bo Ryan, they're looking for somebody at that guard spot. Rust using the screen by Kaminsky, backed out, couldn't hit it. What a great, great blockout. And 
Kaminsky commits the foul with a minute 17 to go. That'll be the second personal on Kaminsky. Watch Taylor here, number 25. It's going to be on the right side of your screen. Look at the block out there. Rear end down, hands back, feeling him, feet moving, and goes up and gets after the basketball. That's as well schooled of a defensive rebound as you will ever see. So it's Steve Taylor Jr. at the line, a freshman from Chicago, who won three consecutive state titles at Simeon High in Illinois. And they'll probably win a fourth with Jabari Parker, who's the number one player in the country in the class of 2013. It's also where Derrick Rose went. Nick Anderson went there. Uh, another theft here by Blue. He's had the quick hands, lays it up, and in. He's had a big first half. Vander with 15. That's a mature play, David. And his coaching staff said how much Vander Blue has matured. This was a really, really mature drive. He didn't get excited. He took his time. You're going to see here. He gets out in transition, right? A great steal. All right. Now, Sam Decker really good at it. He just cuts him off in front. Best jump on the rim. Other kid might have gone too fast, might have thrown it off the backboard, but he took his time, cut the defender off, got his chin on the rim, laid it in. Jake Thomas fouled Showalter in the backboard, so Showalter to the line to shoot, where he hit 75%. Well, what I mean by chin on the rim, if you look at the rim with your eyes and don't lift your chin, your body doesn't come up. Try this at home right now. Look up with just your eyes, right? Now, lift your chin, your shoulders come up, your body feels as if it's coming up, and when you do that, you can get the ball over the front of the rim, whether there's contact or not. Can I, can I look back down now? Please do. Okay. The game is down here. I was getting dizzy. <laughs> I gotta hit it. 32 to 20. And Marquette to run a little bit of clock here in the final minute. They have been impressive with the athleticism, the defensive intensity. And a timeout, and they're going to set up a play here with 37 seconds. So a timeout on the court. A 12-point lead for Marquette. We'll be back in Milwaukee. Actually, we're going to keep it right here. We're talking about Jim Beheim earlier, and Buzz Williams had this to say about the Syracuse University legendary head coach. Coach Beheim's record speaks for itself. Uh, the continuity of that program over the last four decades is a direct reflection of who he is as a person. I think he's the coolest man in college basketball. I do. He's made winning look so easy. Loses three pros, doesn't matter. Fills it with a guy, point guard, Mike Carter-Williams, who's as good as any. I was talking to Pete Moore, and he was, Pete Moore's the SID, and he was talking about the impact that Jim has had on other programs. You look at John Desco, who's the lacrosse coach, five national championships. Gary Gate, the women's lacrosse coach, is the Michael Jordan of lacrosse. Lee Ross and her outstanding assistant, Lindsey Wozniak, has taken the women's basketball, or the women's softball program to the NCAA tournament nearly every year. I mean, Daryl Gross, the athletic director, uh, gives his coaches what they need, but Jim Beheim is the guy that kind of set the standard. Look, in central New York, if he can do it, why can't you? Gardner with a tough play inside for two. 34 to 20. And Jim Beheim fast approaching 900 wins, just three away from that. Playing Monmouth tonight. That's a foul by Gardner trying to reach in on Evans. Not a good foul. 14.9 seconds to go. That Syracuse game starts in just a few minutes, by the way, on ESPN 3. Might be the only bad play Gardner has made all day. Yeah. I mean, and you know what? If you're Buzz Williams there, you can handle that because he's playing hard. He came up. He made a mistake. Uh, not a mistake of omission. You know, a stake of commission. So he, what the heck? I mean, you're asking the guy to go down there and battle. He makes a mistake to heck with it. Evans has six. 0 for 2 at the foul line. Make that 0 for 3. He's just had a hard time there this season. So Marquette with the ball up 14. And you might as well throw it back into Gardner again. Also get Vander Blues had a big half. Wilson on the drive. Rebound taken away. We do have a foul on the play with 1.9 to go. Dave, again, on penetration. They're able to get a shot at the rim. Now, that never happens against Bo's team. It just doesn't. Somebody, somebody steps over on the perimeter. A guy gets in a better stance to guard the drive. 
But that's been as big a difference. The penetration by Marquette has gotten to the rim. The penetration, whenever they've tried to by Wisconsin, has not been there, and it's kept them out to 15 feet. It has been a scuffle. Bergman's there on the bench. They're starting a freshman today in Sam Decker. A lot of Wisconsin fans want to see starting anyway, as gifted as he is. Wilson missed them both. One second, the heave will be well short. And Marquette has to be very satisfied with their first half performance. And certainly Vander Blue out of Madison, Wisconsin. Look at him. 15. Wisconsin is 20 as a team. Now we send it back to Chris Cotter for the Land Rover halftime report. Chris. Wisconsin we are ready for the second half Marquette on the first 20 minutes 34 to 20 Jared Berger the 610 senior one of the stars for the Badgers Dan Dockett he did not score in the first half was that the focus of Bo Ryan's halftime I would imagine he's your leading scorer for a reason he's only taken one shot and that was a three he's not been set up on the block with a shooter same side to clear space my guess at halftime Bo Ryan instructed his team two things get the ball inside and then on the defensive end they've got to keep penetration they got to keep people out of the lane because Marquette's gone to the basket at will Vander Blue one of those guys and he has 15 points six out of eight in the first 20 minutes so he's all smiles and we'll see who comes alive for Wisconsin somebody hit better because they're in a danger zone right away in the early moments of the second half. There's no question about it Dave. I mean you're talking about a Wisconsin team that has 10 turnovers in the first half. They average nine a game. They hate turnovers like Ted Williams hated striking out but that's a ton for them. That's a game's worth typically or more. They get Bergman an early touch. Swung it away by O'Toole. Got a fingertip on it. Yeah, really good defense by O'Toole, but bad offense by Bergman. He was surrounded. He's got to go kick it out. Lou has it taken away, and it's a tie-up. It'll stay on this end. In the early moments here of half number two, this is a bad combination. Turnovers and three-point field goals made. Only one of those so far tonight. Yeah, one for nine, and the eight misses have looked really bad. They, they've shot the ball right, left, just have not looked good in any phase of the game today. Blue, his first shot of the second half off target. Bergeron there for the rebound. I'd go right back to Bergeron. Same action. Get it down there and then play out of it better. Shredding the defense up and in. No good by Jackson as he got into that lane but couldn't convert. Kadugan will back it out now and wait for the rest of his teammates. Blue on Evans. Here's Anderson on the fake. Anderson got his defender in the air. Kadugan's all day open, but can't knock that one in. Yeah, but that's a difference in team. I mean, the ball was reversed four times on that possession. One side to the other, back to the other, back to the other. And Wisconsin is doing too much of this. Throw the ball one side, try to make a move. Now, playing out of it's pretty good action. Here's Bruss. Around and out. Evans got the rebound. Back up. Tips. No. And the follow won't go. Decker got his hand up. Now he's fouled from behind. And the rebounding fray. That's exactly what Wisconsin has to do. Throw the ball inside to start the possession. You would like to reverse it and then throw the ball inside. But by throwing it inside, it puts pressure. It shrinks the defense. Bruss got a great look. The backboard was opened up. Here's Sam Decker, the freshman, ranked the number four small forward in the United States his senior year at Sheboygan Lutheran High. He led them to the state championship. As Devontae Gardner comes back on, he had 40 points in the state title game, and he had 12 of those in less than a minute down the stretch of that game. That's in a state championship, mind you, including sealing the game, winning the game with a 24-point three-pointer. I mean, that's the stuff that led to. That is, that's, from this point on, forever, when they talk about the state tournament, they'll talk about the Sam Decker minute. Forever. Less than a minute. 34 to 21. 
He gives it up for Gardner as he pops out high. This Trent Lockett loves that paint. Got inside, but taken away by Evans. Russ feeds Evans in the lane. The lead or no? The tip no. Bergman is up and the foul as he was hit from behind by Gardner. Buzz Williams wants a foul, wants an offensive foul in Wisconsin, but what Buzz Williams really should want is his team playing hard. They're incredibly lethargic for the first two minutes, and it's evidenced by Gardner going out onto the perimeter and kind of hanging out, and then when Gardner went in the post, he didn't go dominate Bergeron in that possession. He just kind of hung out and was playing offense. First half, every possession by that kid right there, Gardner, was physical, was personal. He went right at Bergman. Very, very lethargic start by Marquette. Bergman with the miss is a very good foul shooter. Typically 84%. But you know what Wisconsin wants to do? They want to muck it up. And they want to make it ugly. The first two possessions. Throw it inside, go on the back. Door. Blue. The leaner won't fall. Trayvon Jackson zips the pass up to Brust. He wants to shoot the long one, and he got it. Dave, Brust, I'm sorry, Jackson gets the rebound. And instead of sprinting back, and Buzz Williams doing a great job here. And he's going right at a couple guys. He said some things quickly because they ran at the ball instead of turn, sprint, and get back. That's mental, not physical. Chris, thank you very much. Buzz Williams asking for a timeout. Wisconsin just reeled off five straight points. They're within 10. No, I don't think Marquette came out to play the second half. First half, they came to compete. Let's, let me show you an example. Vander Blue comes in, takes a shot, misses. Trayvon Jackson gets the rebound. Now, let's watch Blue right here and Gardner right here. They're supposed to sprint back. They don't. Watch those two guys. They come back to the basketball. And Blue just kind of jogs back. When you lollygag, you know what you are, Dave? You're lollygagging. You're down and if you don't find Brust in transition, he's going to make you pay with a three. Marquette also not shooting it well to begin the second half. 0 for 3. Look where he has the ball, Dave. First half, he got the ball. Him being Gardner right on the block. Got doubled up the pass off Wilson. Nice save there by Brust, but back over to Vander Blue. Shot clock is at 8 now for Marquette. Ooh, Lockett traveled again. He gives it right back. Now that was all started by Gardner, who has not come out to play this second half with the same energy that he played with in the first half. And Marquette, he knows it. Marquette with fast break points. And in fact, Gardner was one of those. He was a one-man fast break all the way down the other end. He played as good a half in the first half as any post guy I've seen all year. Second half, he thinks the game is already over, and he's done something. It's probably a not-so-subtle reminder from Buzz Williams. He's still at 20 minutes. Decker left it behind and he turns it over. Everybody's in a hurry in half court offense with Wisconsin. You don't have to be in a hurry. You know, John, when you say be quick but don't hurry, and Wisconsin isn't quick, but they're hurrying, and that's an awful combination. And it's out of character for them. Really out of character. And there's nobody out there that really slows them down. That's where Josh Gosh, a veteran, that's where his presence is. Oh, that's a pretty shot, a hard drive by Vander Blue, who now has 17 to lead all scorers. That cut, a little curl cut left to right, has really hurt Wisconsin the entire game. And what is happening next time down the floor, the Wisconsin player is not getting on top of Blue. They're staying even with him, and when you're even, you're behind. Evans to the foul line, a pass up around the perimeter. Shot clock inside 10 now for the Badgers. See Gardner popping out, leaving his man. Here's Evans, and he air mailed it. You know he's still had a couple of seconds on the clock. He could have taken his time. He rushed his jump shot. Wow. To do shot would have counted. He's going to go to the line. Wisconsin missing a key man. Mike Bruzewitz unable to play and maybe for some time because of a concussion and they are suffering the consequences. Great basketball tradition here at Marquette. That's the legendary Al McGuire, the statue at their basketball facility. He's the all-time winningest coach at this university. Won an NCAA championship, 295. This Buzz Williams now over 100 wins in his career. And not to be forgotten, great friend and a coach along with Al McGuire, our dear pal, Rick Majerus. And if you were Rick's friend, you have somewhere 
in your home, in the files, at least one incredible letter that Rick Majerus wrote. He was a letter writer when nobody writes them anymore. The most poignant, beautiful letters. I've got a couple he wrote when I worked with him at ESPN that I'll cherish forever. I thought you were going to say if you, um, and here's the church earlier today, the ceremony this morning, there was a mass and then there was a reception for Coach Majerus, his family. George Carl spoke at the reception. John Huntsman, the Huntsman Center in Utah, and Alex Jensen, former player of Rick, spoke, spoke at the Mass. And it, it, I thought you were going to say, if you were a friend or knew Rick Majerus, you had one incredible story about oh, him Oh, that's as well. true, too. Right. And it always ended in a great laugh. Yeah, that's you know? exactly and right. And Rick loved to laugh. I mean, he laughed with his whole body. Uh, he had a unique way of speaking, didn't he? Almost his own language well, at times. I just remember watching him do broadcasts with you guys, and it was always offense. That's right. Offense. offense. <laughs> Joe always got people. He had a, a lot of Wisconsinisms. I always thought was charming as heck. And that was one of them. Under 15 and a half to go. We missed him terribly. Ross lets fire. Kaminsky coming in with a rebound, returned it, and he'll go to the line to shoot a pair. Frank Kaminsky, the sophomore. Well, Frank Kaminsky was at the top of the key, set a little screen for Bruss for the three, and then nobody got back to Kaminsky to check him out. In the first half, and I, I, I hate to keep beating this, but in the first half, somebody would have put a body on Kaminsky. Second half, not so much for Marquette. Buzz Williams, by the way, a very nice gesture to Rick Majerus wearing a turtleneck today, which was Rick's sweater of choice. I will promise you, if they win this game, he will wear a turtleneck at least the <laughs> next right. game. Coach is being crazy superstitious. He may wear it out. Kaminsky with another one coming. You know, on the topic of free throw shooting, if Wisconsin were hitting their foul shots, I should say if Marquette were hitting their foul shot, Wisconsin only made 7 out of 14, but in particular, the Golden Eagles, they'd have a much bigger lead. Two out of 11. And that's going to be an offensive foul, 15 08 to go. Feel a little bit of a trend going Wisconsin's way? I felt it since the start of the half when the first possession for Wisconsin, they had four shots at the basket. That didn't happen in the first half. It really didn't. Three on Juan Anderson. And, and I'll tell you what else, Dave. This place was electric to start and throughout the entire first half. Now it's like everybody feels, ah, we're up 14 at the time at halftime. Now it's 10. We're all right. But not so much. Wisconsin's not going to give in. Well, they never do. They need a hot hand, however. Here's the youngster, Marshall, back off to Brust. Dave, I think that kid right there, Marshall, is the key to their season. Evans attacks, swatted from behind. He draws the foul. Now, why do you say that about a freshman? Well, they love the way he played last year in practice against Jordan Taylor. And this pass right here, that's a heck of a pass. He didn't throw it to his teammate, number five. He threw it away from the gold-shirted defender right there. You see, it's away from the defender. That's a point guard pass. And this game to this point has been decided by a lack of a quick, good thinking, good distributing point guard for Wisconsin. And Marshall is the guy that fits the bill that Wisconsin needs. O'Toole with his third foul. Marshall has started six out of the nine games before this one. It's a true rarity for Bo Ryan. And as Gosser, you can only watch with the torn ACL. Ooh, banked in by Evans. Why not? Why not? It's, it's a big square. Just hit the square. <laughs> he certainly didn't do it intentionally, but when you're hitting 37% of your free throws, try anything, right? Absolutely. How come nobody goes under that? Wilson pops. Yes, that rattles in. Give Wilson with the basket. A pretty good defense. Kaminsky was out on a bigger guy. But Wilson just extended and knocked in a tough shot. Buzz Williams said today he thought that for long stretches last year he was the MVP of the Marquette team. Here's Kaminsky. Around it out with a three. Blue to run the offense. Bounces for Kadugan. Hand off for Gardner. Beautifully run. You can't run a break better than that. And that's what we saw in the first half. Everybody running the floor. Gardner ran the floor. Kadugan ran the floor. Everybody got down bad. Took the ball down the floor. That's what we saw early, not so much early in the second half, though. So they're back on top by 13. They led it halftime by 14. Spencer goes around the perimeter, brusks off to Evans. 
Shot clock to nine. Blue out on Russ. He's really enjoying defending him. It's blocked by Gardner. Russ came in and caught it anyway. Had a foul on the play to go against, I believe, Lockett of Marquette. I'm not sure how Brust was able to get to that loose ball. It was a shot he blocked. Well, this is a little bit earlier. This is what happened in the first half. Blue gets the rebound, and you see jailbreak. Four guys down the floor. That's what coaches call transition when four or five guys get down the floor. And now Gardner celebrates, but here, Brust going to force one up. Gardner blocks it, but goes past. And then Brust just out hustles and gets a foul. Marshall, yeah. Three pointer for the youngster. He's the key. He is the key. He has got to play well. Only a 36% three point shooter. Five points a game. He's got to play much better now. Holding foul here with 13 minutes to go. 13 17 in the second half. And action packed day of college basketball continues tonight on ESPN2. Number eight, Arizona is on the road to face Clemson at eight, then at 10. The 13th ranked fighting Alina. It's a fun team to watch. Illinois taking on number 10 Gonzaga another outstanding team to watch in the kennel I think Gonzaga has a real shot this year at a final four slash national championship. I really do They've got two of everything uh, Elias Harris has moved himself into first round consideration uh, Pango's terrific guard Stockton Stockton son John Stockton son a terrific guard as well Gardner can't hit it Russ tiptoeing the line and he is traveling a turnover Wisconsin, they're about to trigger a break. You know, he wants to argue right there. He wants to. But he has the worst <laughs> angle. Right. <laughs> he's not. He's you do save those. <laughs> you do. And if he's going to argue, he's going to wait until Bo Borowski comes in front of him so he can get heard. So Marquette takes over on the baseline. Lockett trying to get it in, and over the top he goes. Derek Wilson running the point now for the Golden Eagles. Thomas. Nothing there. Wilson fires. It rattles out. Boy, it spun around on the cylinder. That was the best defensive possession Wisconsin's had this entire game, and it was keyed by George Marshall keeping Wilson in front of him. Holding foul, trying to contain the Wisconsin Badgers and number 12, Trayvon Jackson. Foul against Marquette. That'll go against Derek Wilson. Ten-point lead for the Golden Eagles here. The key for Wisconsin is to back up stops with stops. You know, you get in a huddle during a timeout, and you say, all right, we need to stop a bucket and stop. And again, because of George Marshall, number three, that was the best defensive possession Wisconsin's had. He was able to contain the ball, which took all the pressure off of his teammates to help. It was really the first time a guy from Wisconsin has kept the ball in front of him all game. Still only one point in this game for Wisconsin Badger big man, Jared Bergman. Who averages 15. He slapped with the rebound. Devontae Gardner jumps up for it. And fouled on the play. Bergman commits the foul. Those two have really been going at each other. They have, man. Gardner has gotten the best of it. But I'll credit Bergman there. He's doing anything he can to get his hands on the ball. Like Gardner in the first half, he, Bergman made a foul of commission, not omission. It's his third foul, however. It wasn't the smartest foul. At least he's trying. Kadugan back to blue. Thomas fires. Bergeron there for the rebound. He has been crashing the glass. Dave, I'm telling you, George Marshall right there, the kid with the ball, has changed the defense for Wisconsin. Incredibly active that last possession, helping his teammates. And he's quick. He is speedy. Bergeron right there with Gardner. Wilson came over to help, but Bergeron sweeps in for two. Wilson did a bad job, Dave. He came over to help on Bergeron's left shoulder, which he should have sealed along with Gardner and made Bergen kick the ball out. He gave too much space, and Bergen was able to slip in between with a great move. Well, don't look now, but the Badgers are starting to make it a game. Blue, trouble with it, got it off to Thomas somehow. Yep, sped up. Traveling violation. 
So the turnovers piling up suddenly for Buzz Williams' team. The Battle of Wisconsin from the great city of Milwaukee. More when we come back. Lights on the Milwaukee River. 41-33 Marquette and inside the BMO Harris Bradley Center. Too many turnovers for Wisconsin. Ten in the first half. Look, just don't be lazy with your passes. And oh, by the way, throw it to your teammate. Don't throw it to the other team, but here's how you don't throw it to the other team right there. You saw Sam Decker. He threw it to a red shirt. Dave, you don't throw the ball to your teammate. What you do is you throw the ball away from the defender. Now, that very little simple thing is the difference between having 10 turnovers and a half and having what Wisconsin normally has, which is eight or nine turnovers for an entire game. They have not thrown the ball away from the defense. Already 12 tonight. No, I rarely criticize Bo Ryan, but I got to tell you, I, I don't like what he did here. Like, and maybe they come back, but George Marshall has made all the difference in the world in this game. And they, they're taking him out now. And this could change the game dramatically in Marquette's favor because George Marshall has been a huge factor early in the second half. Jackson from the paint, and it's going to drop in. And he wanted a foul, too. He should have got a foul. That he got hit on the wrist. However, this is the closest Wisconsin has been in ages in this game. 41-35, Blue trying to answer, that's off target. Bergman again went up high for the rebound, and he threw it down. I like the fact that Jim Bird didn't call a foul right there. He let him sort it out, figure it out, and the play continued. Jump shot on the way, now three-pointer won't fall. Evans with a high rebound. Kicks it back out, Bergman's outside. He nails it, a three-pointer, and here comes Wisconsin. Within three. Now, like I said, great move taking George Marshall out. <laughs> That's by far the best look Wisconsin has gotten on the perimeter. And Coach Williams not happy. And he hasn't been happy all half and rightfully so with the effort of his team. You know I love him. But I think the guy in the other huddle is probably going to the Hall of Fame one day. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Jackson. As we said, looked like he got hit on the elbow. He certainly won a foul as the shot went. He did get hit on the elbow right there. Uh, just a little right there. Yep. He got hit on the elbow, but he was tough enough. Jimmy Jackson's son, tough enough to go get a basket. And now the Bergeron three. And a big 6'10 kid who can shoot like that can really break your back. Yeah, pretty good play by number one there, Brust. Watch the shot. Ball gets kicked out. Good job by Evans out toughing Marquette and really good recognition by number one Brust to find Bergeron for a three. So Wisconsin, their largest deficit has been 14. They have not had a lead tonight, but they are within three you know on the road. You know what's hard for players to handle success? You're up 14, coaches are sweating at halftime. Players like, ah, the game's over. We're up 14 and a half. I'm telling you, that is so difficult for players to understand and keep playing, and Mar Marquette has not kept playing in this game. Kick ball here. Buzz Williams had to remake his coaching staff. He got very fortunate. He lost three assistants, and among the guys he was able to bring into the program is Jerry Wainwright, who was a head coach for a long, long time. He brought in two really good coaches, Jerry Wainwright, North Carolina Wilmington, and DePaul, and Jeff Reynolds, head coach. At Air Force, two terrific basketball minds. Evans with the block. There's Jerry. And there's there's Reynolds. So Buzz Williams, who's been highly successful in his own right, bolstering his staff, but they're in a dogfight right now. There's another whistle with 10.03 to go. The foul against Wisconsin. They're going to get Bergman for that one. That's four on Jared Bergman. Yeah, Bergman was just late to the party, and he doesn't want to come out, but you have to come out. Like, as a coach, Bergman just shoved Gardner, and now Bergman said, don't take me out. Well, there's no option. You have to come out with 10 minutes. 10 minutes ago. left, yeah. Fight there on the baseline. And another whistle. That's going to go the other way. It'll be Wisconsin ball as that one is out of play. All right, let's look here. That's a legit play. His foot didn't come down, but I will say this. In the pre-practice, pre Marquette ran great out of bounds. And in the game, those last two possessions were awful. 
Jackson running the point. Gives it up to Kaminsky. Evans wants to work into the lane on the drive and a foul with 9.42 left and Wisconsin closing the gap. And the most revered award in college football will be presented tonight at ESPN. 18 minutes before that ceremony. We will join one of the game's most exclusive fraternities, the Heisman Trophy presentation tonight at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Who are you taking? Uh, Manti Teo. I, I think I agree with what Brian Kelly said. If Manti Teo doesn't win the Heisman, then they ought to just make it an offensive award. Undefeated playing the national championship game, I would tend to agree. I'd like to see a linebacker win it for a chance. I would too. Particularly a linebacker that has endeared himself to the student body like Manti Teo has. Second effort for Wisconsin. Jackson using the screen by Kaminsky. Evans again to make his move and a foul as he made his way. A slew of whistles here against Marquette in the last couple of minutes. I love what Evans is doing. Two straight possessions. He's gotten low with the basketball. He's gotten determined and he's taking it right at him. Now, Evans has to be able to step to the line and make a free throw where right now he's one for five. Juan Anderson with his fourth, another miss by Evans. What is going wrong? A foul here. What is going wrong with his foul shot? Well, he has zero confidence. His wrist is under the ball. But Dave, he's banked him in. He shot him short. He's missed one to the right. He's missed one to the, he's missed one every way you can possibly miss one, which tells me he has a complete lack of confidence from his wrist up, meaning he has no confidence in his follow through or his snap. Kavinsky committed the foul. Kadugan to penetrate. Banks it up in a blocking foul. He'll go to the line. Well, that snaps a streak for Marquette. They went over four minutes without a field goal. Yeah, I don't know about this one, Dave. I'm anxious to see this. Pretty good by Bruss. Watch his shoulders. I know he's moving. And people say, well, he's moving. No, no, no. That he was in front of Kadugan. He had his shoulders squared. I think sometimes referees get affected by the surrounding. So Kadugan going for three-point play. Brust is arguing that call with Ben Borowski. He thought it should certainly have been an offensive foul. 44 to 38. I said it earlier, Bo Borowski's one of the best in the business. And rarely does he miss one, but I think Brust was there, established, should have been a charm. Pressure from Marquette. Evans to bring it up. Dave, this tells you where Marquette is or where Wisconsin is with their point guard. Having Evans bring the basketball up the last four possessions to get him into offense. Bergren continues to sit in foul trouble. Let me bring it back. I think he waited three more minutes, get around five, six minutes, see where the score is. Jackson tied up. He was fouled on the play by Marquette. Foul will go against Derek Wilson. Hey, people can complain all they want, but that was a foul. Tenth team foul, too. I mean, the rich guys here sitting in the front row are complaining. That's cool, but he just smacked him. And we had a great angle for it. Trayvon Jackson is a very good foul shooter, 82%. We'll get another angle for you. You see Jackson keeping his dribble alive. I'm in the face. Or he flopped. So Jackson with another one coming. He's a sophomore out of Westerville, Ohio, and he makes one of two. Neither side is making their free throw. Oh, this is ridiculous. At one point, it was 10 out of eight, uh, 28. I think now it's 11 out of 31 between the two teams. There will be a foul called out Wisconsin down here unless they shoot quick. This way you tell your team, put your head down and drive. We're going to go around. You don't have to tell Lockett twice. Vander Blue. Deflected away by Kaminsky. Shot clock's down to seven now. Kadugan pulls up, pops, great upward man. Wow. He has ten. They're up and making noise. Kaminsky straight on trying to silence them, and he does. Great move by Bo Ryan. Bringing Kaminsky to shoot threes off of the ball screen, taking Gardner out of the block, opening up the post, but more importantly, making Gardner help on a drive, get back to the shooter. He simply can't do it. 46-42. 
Vander Blue has been pretty quiet in the second half for the Golden Eagles. Well, Kaminsky really bad with Gardner on the block. Doing a great job. Shot clock to three. To Dugan. Teardrop. Yes! He hit it. Almost ran that shot clock all the way down. Marquette by six. Evans with an answer. Yes! He drops in a two-pointer. Same play. Double high ball screen. Take the ball one way. Roll the second screener. Pop the opposite postman. This time it was Evans who knocked it in. Can't make a free throw, but he can make one from 18 feet off a path. Well, there is a lot of emotion in this building. But it's Wisconsin and Marquette to fight for the state of Wisconsin. Blue, quick drive to the right. No. Wisconsin with the rebound. Jackson to push the tempo. He feeds Frost. He waits. Now fires. Evans with a great rebound on the other side of the iron. And it's going to be a foul against Marquette with 6.32 to go. Hey, we are heating up here. Junior Cadogan, Marquette. Right here. Look at this. A little stop and pop again. They let him drive in the lane. Here, Frank Kaminsky right back at you after a high ball screen. Let's go down the other end. Junior Cadogan with a floater. We're heating up here. In Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Chris, thank you very much. A look at the Milwaukee public market, 48 to 44. As this one has really gotten close now after Wisconsin had fallen behind by as many as 14. Things that make you go, hmm, is playing over the PA system. And what makes coaches go, hmm, is when you don't come out to play the second half. Now, Wisconsin came out to play the second half, being down 14 at half. Marquette, Buzz Williams, his team, not Buzz, his team relaxed. And when you relax against a program like Wisconsin, you're in for a ball game, and that's exactly what we have. It'll be Evans to the line. This has not been pretty. One for seven. He can't add another one. Yeah, but that was a much better stroke. He just needs to repeat that stroke, Dave. And what he did, let's see if he does it again. Watch if Evans holds his foul through. The rule of thumb, hold your foul through until the ball hits the rim. The one he's made, he actually banked in. Mm. And this is two more. Mm. I mean, if he were just decent at the line, they'd have the lead. Down the stretch, you're going to have to take him out. You're going to have to figure that out. You are. Because Bergman's getting ready to come back in, or he is back in. And you do have Kaminsky available, who played really well in that short stretch he was in. Lewis had a tough second half. He missed there. It went out of play. It'll be Marquette ball. He was 6-12 to go. Vander Blue only has two points. You there. cannot, unless you're just great, 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 you can't turn focus on and off in the middle of a game like this. You just can't. And I really believe Vander Blue and Gardner turned it on and off, meaning they were totally on to start with, lost it at halftime, and you just, you, you cannot do that. And those two kids have in this game. The Blue with just two points since halftime. The officials are going to the monitor to see if this touched the rim. So that's what they're looking at, and it did. Yeah. You know it's a bad shot when they've got to go to the monitor just to see if it touched the rim. <laughs> and barely grazed it. <laughs> barely grazed it. Yeah. That's the kind of half that Blue has had. And he had a terrific first half. I'm telling you, you just it's what's it's what makes coaches appreciate a guy like Junior Cadugan, who just play. Doesn't matter the score, it's play. Guys so that get review here. Go ahead. Guys that get affected by score. In terms of how hard they play or how focused they are, just too inconsistent. Make coaches turn gray, make coaches lose hair, make coaches get in broadcast booth. That clearly hit the rim. So, John Cow, one of the very best in the game, resetting that shot clock at 35. So, a full shot clock here for Marquette. Junior Cadugan's been a go-to man. He has seven straight points for Marquette. That's what I say. He's just a guy that plays. You, you just see it by his demeanor. I don't care if he had a good half, bad half. He's going to come out to play the second half. Cadugan here. Brushed on him. The bounce for Devontae Gardner. Yeah, look where Gardner's catching the ball. Off the block where you can get help. Wilson in the lane. Won't drop. Rebound tipped twice. Wilson wins it back. 
Fades away and hits it. Well, they were relentless there. They were. They just out muscled and out tough and out jumped. Wisconsin, and the way you combat that, if you're Wisconsin, you got to put a body on somebody when you're not as athletic. Same play, there. Here's Bergman dead on. No, off the back of the iron. Now, Bergman had been sitting for quite a while. Been back in the game for a couple of minutes, but as he cooled off, he looked like he was starting to heat up when he nailed a big three earlier. And that's where just make, committing a dumb foul, which is what he did, comes back to haunt you. you. You can't get going in the game sitting on the bench. They've actually changed the fouls on him. He's now with three, and that's a traveling violation on Kadugan, who dragged that foot. So it's three fouls on Bergeron. A little good news there for the Badgers here, but exactly five minutes left. Well, what you go back to, depending on, Bo Ryan knows Bergeron's shot and confidence better than anybody, but that was a wide open look. Four possessions in a row, they've gone to a high ball screen, came off the ball screen, rolled the second ball screener, popped the first ball screener, and the first ball screener's been wide open. You, what you do as a coach, Dave, in a game like this, 50-44, to 44, not a high-scoring game, is you try to find something you're comfortable with offensively, and that's the movement that Bo's found. Bergman taking it across midcourt, so they're trying everybody. Jackson. Here's Decker. 4.40 to go. Crossed on blue. And back on top for Trayvon Jackson. Shot clock to nine. Jackson dumps it down for Bergman. Blocked on the play. Tremendous defensive stop for Marquette in under the basket. We're going to show that possession, Dave. But Gardner was great that entire possession from start to finish. I don't know if we'll have time to show the whole thing, but he was great to start it and then block the shot to end it. Anderson setting the screen. Wilson directing traffic. They have eight seconds to shoot it. And a six-point lead for Marquette. Now down to four. He wants to take it. Poked away for a moment. Got it back. Wriggling in, and the shot clock expires. That's not what Buzz Williams had in mind there. Timeout, 3.53 to go. Six-point lead for Marquette. Chris, thank you very much. There's a Badger caught in a sea of Golden Eagles. Six-point lead for Marquette. Hey, you want to see a big guy play defense for an entire possession? Keep your eyes right here on Devontae Gardner. Just watch him. Keep your eyes. He's right there now. All right? He helps on a, on a ball screen. Rotates back. Watch him underneath the bucket. Watch him. He's front. Bergman fights over the top. Beats him to the spot. Fronts him there. No way you can get it inside. End of the possession. He gets a little tired. Helps on a ball screen. Rotates down. Blocks the shot. Or maybe blocks the wrist, but the definition of a foul is when the referee raises his hand and says foul. So his third block officially. Yeah. But you're right. I mean, a guy that size, to be that active for that long. That was terrific. I mean, he's 285. He played two ball screens, two post possessions, went back and recovered, and blocked the shot. That's a heck of a defensive possession by, as you said, a big guy who's lost 60 pounds during his career. Wisconsin needs a shooter. Again, Bergman back on the floor. Decker can hit it, too. He's the freshman with it up top, a long one. High rebound, Bergen went up over everybody. Second effort for the Badgers. Well, they need to go to the double high ball. Here it is, the double high ball screen look. One, all right, first guy slips. Bergen beyond the three-point line. Jackson, round the back with the dribble. Decker, baseline. Great play by Anderson. A clean out of nowhere. Juan Anderson up there for the stop. Lock it on the wing. 2.45 to go here in Milwaukee. Kadugan calling for play. Shot clock's at five. Dugan has been the man in the second half to drive. And the foul! How many times in this game, Dan, has Marquette, with the shot clock down to nothing, made a huge shot?
Two threes in the first half, and then Junior Cadogan off a little high ball screen. Beats Evans, does what really good guards do. He led with his hip. Watch his left hip. He leads with his hip into the shot blocker, keeps the ball away from Bergeron, strong enough with his chin on the rim to get a three-point play. This kid's been the difference in the game here, Dave, in the second half. Uh, 14 points, 10 since halftime. Where his other teammates have been immature in their play, Ber uh, excuse me, Kadugan has been very, very mature. Now that's officially four on Bergman. The 2.34 to go. Three-point play for Junior Kadugan. They can see why Buzz Williams is so fond of him. He's his favorite player, and he should be. You know, people think you like all your players. You don't, but you love that kid. Jackson is the lane, opens up, knocked away. Another stop for Marquette. Remember a Wisconsin team that has turned it over quite at this rate in a key game. But Marquette is making them do it. 13 turnovers. I mean, that's not out of line for most teams, but it is for the Badgers. Locking an offensive foul as he shoved away Bruss with that left arm. Third time Russ has tried to do that. This time he gets the call. And you're right, Dave, the turnovers. But you see here, Brust, you see the push. And as soon as the referee, Jim Burr, who had a perfect line on it, saw that arm extended, that is an automatic offensive foul. Under two. Time running out on the men in red. They double high ball screen. This is the only move that's worked today. Marshall goes either way. Roll the first guy, pop, pop the second. can't get inside Decker off the fake two-point shot rebound tipped and a fight for it and again it's Mark Pitt coming away and the whistle and a foul on the backcourt with 134 to go sixth foul in the half 53-44 now they're going to call the seventh team foul and so that will put him at the line it'll be vander blue to shoot 75 percent that was a great defensive possession from this standpoint everybody was in a stance got it back up for two and it's back up to 11. Bergeron launches a long one. Yes! He cashes in on a three timeout, Wisconsin. And they're not done yet. Well, Bergeron made up for it because he didn't put a body on Gardner on the foul line, costing his team two points. But you got to give Bergeron credit. He came right back, knocked it in to give Wisconsin at least a chance here with a minute 18 to go. Trailing by eight. Students having a great time here at the Bradley Center. You said they lined up early today, that mid morning. There's a long line outside the ticket window. And then when they opened up those doors, they came flooding in, racing for their seats. I never get tired of seeing that. No, it's one of the great scenes, I think, in college basketball. They come flying in. And as you said, man, just a blast these kids are having. Now, this is the 119th meeting between Wisconsin and Marquette. Wisconsin has the lead in the series 64 to 54, but they're in deep trouble in yeah, this one. I think you've got a foul. I think you've got a foul right now. Marshall on Kadugan. Tried to free the ball from him. Vander Blue now. Approaching one minute to play. And not fouling. This could go down to about 40 seconds. Shot clock at 10. Kadugan gives it up. Here's Lockett. So they did not foul. They get the ball back. As badly as the free throws have been shot in this game, you would think he would foul. Marshall hits it. A big three-pointer. Five-point lead and another timeout. So don't go away just yet. 40.5 seconds. As you said, Bo Ryan going into the Hall of Fame, he knew not to foul because Marshall was going to come down here to three, cut it to a two-possession game. Oh, sure he did. <laughs> he knew. 
you know, a game like this, you don't, you switch, fine, which is what Marquette did, but you have to switch to take away something, and that switch was pretty much useless. They didn't take away anything. Uh, Jamel Wilson came out, but wasn't really a factor. Well, now you absolutely have to foul. Yeah, now you've got no choice. I mean, you can't let it get down to a five-point game with five seconds to go. And 55-50. So Jared Bergman and the Wisconsin Badgers would need a bit of a miracle here. And the line, neither side has acquitted itself very well. Pressure from the Badgers on the ball, and a long one here to Kadugan. They'll catch a line. Or excuse me, to Kaduga. Marshall got caught on it because what, the reason that play works is the guy, in this case Marshall, has to get in front of Kadugan. So unless there's a switch, you're going to be running from behind, which is exactly what Marshall did. Perfect pass, layup, three-point play. Great, great half from Junior Kadugan. Only averages six points a game. He has 17 in the contest. And as of this moment, 13 in the second half. 17 points, a new career high for him. So he, more than anybody else, took over the second half. He's also making his foul shots. We haven't said that very often today for these teams. Dave, he took it over in a variety of ways. You mentioned the numbers, but as much as anything else, he took it over mentally, too. He, made, he willed his team. His team was immature coming out of the half, and Junior Cadugan made sure that they weren't going to lose. And then everybody had to rise to his level. Mishandled by Decker. It's out of play off Wisconsin. 28.3 to go. Marquette by eight. So if Marquette wins this one, they will improve to six and two. Wisconsin would drop to six and four. Already four losses for the Badgers. And they've been playing a lot of teams who went to the NCAA tournament last year. This is their fourth opponent who went to the tournament last season. Another foul here, 58-50. Well, first six and a half to go. I'm sorry, the game was really, you know, decided this second half by Junior Cadugan, but you do have to say for Marquette, what a great effort coming out to start this game in the first half, particularly by Gardner. He went right at Bergeron, and I think the fact that Gardner was so aggressive offensively really affected Mark, uh, Wisconsin's leading scorer, Jared Bergeron, on the offensive end. Lockett makes the first, the 76% foul shooter. Tale of two halves for Junior Cadugan. He was the man down the stretch here. And Lockett makes the pair. 10-point game. And Marquette is going to win here over Wisconsin in the battle for states bragging rights. They will go to the Golden Eagles. And I think Rick Majerus in particular would have been very, very pleased by this one. I think he would have been very... You remember he had guys like Andre Miller. And that's who Kadugan reminded me of this game if we're going to go back to Majerus type plays. Because he took it over. He took it driving. He got to the basket. He three-point plays. Hit pull-up jump shots. Ten-point lead. Timeout Marquette. Let's toss it back to the studio right now. Chris Cotter. Chris. All right, Dave. Well, we've got a timeout there in Milwaukee. Just want to remind folks they have tipped it little. John, the number eight team in the country, Arizona, making the cross-country trip to play in a place where it's very tough to win. Arizona and Clemson just about two minutes in. 3-2 Arizona on top. It's currently airing on ESPN2 in those markets, and it'll be all over the country as soon as your game ends there in Milwaukee.
Well, the Marquette students having a lot of fun at the expense of the Badgers here today. Very lively, electrifying environment inside the Bradley Center. Only time it's been quiet in here today was the very touching ceremony for Rick Majerus in the moment of silence. Jackson in, misses the bunny. His seconds remaining, and that'll do it as Marquette has knocked off Wisconsin. 60 to 50, the final score in the rivalry game. Buzz Williams honoring Rick Majerus with the turtleneck, shaking the hand of Bo Ryan. They'll meet again next year. For Dan Dockich and our entire crew, I'm Dave O'Brien. Thanks for joining us as College Hoops continues on ESPN2. Now, we send it to Rich Hollenberg in Clemson.